Health Focus is brought to you by National Medical Stores, NMS, passionate about your life. Rachel Asimwe has been taking care of a person living with epilepsy since 2013. Her first encounter was via an emergency phone call from her mother. And that they were in hospital treating injuries that he had sustained. So at first, the first thing that rushed, that was in my mind was that was epilepsy. So, but then I did not know how to tell my mother about it. Because for her initially, she thought that he was, there's somebody maybe who doesn't like us in the family or something like that, and that it was witchcraft. He, she told me that uh, he had uh, a rash on his face, and then he had some injuries on his, on his uh, face that he had sustained from the fall at school. So immediately I go on internet, I search about the symptoms, the signs and all that, and then they tell me that an, a rash is one of the signs of epilepsy. To understand what epilepsy is, we spoke to Dr. Richard Idro, a senior lecturer at Makerere University and consultant pediatrician and pediatric neurologist at Mlago Hospital. Epilepsy is an abnormal discharge from the brain, uh, characterized with abnormal brain discharge, which occurs repeatedly and manifests with either motor movements, abnormal behavior, um, abnormal emotions, abnormal relations. It's much more common in the very young and then in the, in the, el in the elderly for various conditions. But the most important characteristic of which is an abnormality in the brain which makes an individual prone to getting repeated convulsions. For more than five years, Asimwe's mother has never come to terms that their loved one has the brain disorder. Because she was in the bubble of this is witchcraft, if we go to church, it will actually heal. So we sought inter God's intervention, we went to churches, uh, we went to herbalists to find out what the problem was. So they prayed for him, but then it didn't work yet he still got the convulsions. And then we went to herbalists. They gave us cherry cans of traditional medicine and all that. He took that, but he still had convulsions. He would be at school and then he would hear that he had a fall, he had an attack, and definitely it wasn't working. Dr. Idro says most people have a poor understanding of epilepsy and its causes. It may be inherited. So there may be a genetic abnormality which affects the way the brain um, uh, controls its electrical discharges. It may be a, a, baby, uh, a baby's brain did not develop normally uh, or developed abnormally while the baby was still in the womb, so an abnormal brain development. Or it may be because the mother, while the baby was still in the womb, got an infection and this infection crossed the the placenta and entered and affected the baby's brain and injured the baby's brain. Many of them are due to difficulties around birth. Parasite infections of the brain by the lover of the pork tapeworm. If one eats infected undercooked pork and stroke from high blood pressure are other preventable causes. Infections of the brain, for example meningitis or cerebral malaria, malaria which involves the, the brain, um, uh, it damages the brain cells and you may develop epilepsy. We have um, uh, road traffic accidents, especially border border uh, accidents. You drive on the roads, um, you fall, sustain a head injury, it heals with a scar. Many affected people, especially children, are denied school, mostly due to stigma and negative beliefs. When he falls, when I'm not around, I actually worry a lot of what will happen. For example, there's a time he fell on his way to school, so I immediately rushed to go home. But then when I asked someone about what had transpired when I wasn't around, they told me that there was like a group of people around him and everybody was just looking at him having a convulsion. Like nobody really bothered to actually do something about it. Because, and I don't blame them, blame them because they do not know what to do. Epilepsy is not you do not contract it by touching somebody 
or like in some of our communities, if a person is having a fit, people say that if that saliva of that person drops on you, you'll contract a place. No. During an attack, what we need is to, for this person to be safe. So if it's in an environment, um, you, the person can lie down and be fitting, please move the tables off, move things which can injure that person off. You do not try to restrain that person because the convulsions are hard. You may end up fracturing um, um, the arm or the legs. You may damage the, the damage things in this person. Two, one of the things which we should never do is to attempt to put things in the mouth. That we're putting a spoon in the mouth or putting a stick so that the person does not bite the tongue or putting our finger you, you may risk doing two or three things. One, you may push the tank backwards, and this person is not that aware. You may push it backwards, and it falls and obstructs breathing. And suddenly, this person now has no air going on, and you may lose this person. Two, the convulsions are very strong. In the process, you may break a tooth, and it may aspirate. And especially for children, their teeth are very sharp. You put it there, they can even bite off your finger and may aspirate. Now you have a big emergency, you have lost your finger, but also it has gone into the airway. And you need now an ENT surgeon to go down into the lungs to try to remove things. Most scissors stop on their own within one to three minutes. The brain has the ability to try to control these things and stop them. But a scissor which lasts five minutes or longer is dangerous because by that time the body may be losing its ability to stop it you may be expanding up all your glucose and the uh, the, uh, uh, the oxygen which is in the blood and this may lead to further brain injury such a person needs urgent treatment but epilepsy is treatable and curable this treatment is given for a long time it's not like uh, malaria we give it until you have not had another attack for two years I'm not saying it's given for two years. It means that along the way, so you get an attack, we start counting the two years again. Over 70% of patients can have their seizures effectively controlled with the current treatments. Unfortunately, despite their availability to be healed, up to 60% of people with epilepsy do not take these medicines. Uganda's population of 45 million people has between 450,000 to 900,000 people living with epilepsy. Globally, World Epilepsy Day is commemorated on the 14th of February every year. Walter Mwesije, NTV. <laughs>